Hello, I'm back. Let us begin. Do you guys have any questions? Go for it. Well, I have a question. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, do you guys have any questions for me? Let's do the time. And I'm talking about I was going to do like a line drawing kind of esque painting, and this is kind of what it's going to be like. I don't have an idea. That'd be cool. At least I hope it's cool. I get. I guess I have a question. If uh, no one else is uh, chomping at the bit. Yeah, dude. So one of my goals with uh, this like fantasy based stuff that I'm doing is to try to use it uh, to submit for even lower level freelance work just so I can get some more uh, resume juice. Resume. Is there any? Ad- <laughs> is there any advice like how to appropriately you know reach out to to companies be like hey you know i'm looking for a freelance like check out my stuff like what is the the proper way to go about that so it's not just like some random shit you know it's more professional uh, i think it's just be clearly polite and courteous you know just I think anything that you kind of already know. There's nothing. There's nothing really special about it. Um, there would be some notes that I would give somebody would be, which is, uh, you know, think about, uh, consider that if you write them every day, it's kind of weird. <laughs> but if you write, yeah. I think a good time to write back would be whenever you have some significant changes to your portfolio. So usually it takes like six months, maybe another year to reach out to Mm. them again. You know, that's really reasonable. And nobody should get upset with you. Uh, And if you don't hear anything, don't take it personal. Sometimes it's just bad management. Like producers are just not good about keeping track. And this is like goes for every company. Especially the bigger sure, ones. Sure, sure. So yeah, that would be my thing to you, which would be like, yeah, don't worry too much about it. Persistent but uh, courteous. Yeah. yeah, stuff that you probably already knew about. Sure, sure. Um, yeah, because uh, a lot of times studios just don't respond. You know, with our studio, like it's just like a few of us, right? We're working on this game. And the few of us that are working on it, you know, we're like, it's really quick turnaround. Um, like after this, I'm going to have a meeting with my art or my uh, boss about hiring this, this person and hiring in general. We're going to talk about it in just a bit. And uh, yeah, it's really simple. It's just me and him really. And if I say we should hire him, he's going to probably take that very seriously. Um, he he just reached out, or he got reached out by a few people on Game of Sutra. Have you heard of that site? Mm-mm. So Game of Sutra, is a, a video game website. And it's like run by professional people, and uh, yeah, like people come here and there's like the latest jobs tab and all this kind of stuff, and there's articles. Oh, yeah, see, for instance, uh, the game that I'm working on is right here. Prioritizing. Features. So it's kind of like a concept art dot or job section, but just like a different. Uh... Well, this is like the whole game. It's not just like concept art. It's like games, video games. Oh, okay. So a bunch of different job stuff not just art related yeah so here's like the article that's about the game that i'm working with so i'm like they just brought me on as art director and so i'm helping them re redesign and re like challenge the design aesthetic of this game and my boss is totally cool with that he's like that's why we're bringing you on because it was just him and someone else it was just him and a programmer pretty much did everything and uh so they brought me on to kind of help 
push this then it's already good i like it already and i told mm. we can definitely make it better and so yeah so like there's a really cool article about it which is great don't give sutra and then because of that people like applied that's awesome like they just jumped and like we got it like our boss like checked it out like right away and he was like oh cool so visual arts there's 23 openings 3d animating environment artists when they say senior environment artist that usually means 3d mm. it has to say concept art if it means concept so character artist means concept or uh, 3d right right so usually you'll have to say like concept art if there's any real position but you can double check uh, but i'm positive it's 3d let's find out maintains consistent style direction under uh, creates models, textures, and shaders for characters. Yeah. Yeah, Maya ZBrush Mudbox in the education or experience. Mm -hmm. That's usually what they mean. They usually they has to it has to say concept art. It means concept art. Um, there's game dev map. I'm not sure how updated this is. Oh, it looks like it is updated. Cause this looks different. And this is just like all the companies that exist in the country or in the world that they they found right now. So you, you it's have, a cool resource. Yeah, you have Game of Sutra. As well. Um, but there's like plenty of stuff, like going to events and stuff too. Going to BlizzCon, like some of my students are going to BlizzCon, and they bring their portfolios because they have a hiring thing. So this is what's going on. But like going to events and stuff in general. Hey, watch now. Let's watch it, guys, together. Can I watch it? Are you serious? Oh. I'm going to definitely be watching this. Overwatch quarterfinals at 12? Hold on, guys. I gotta do some work. <laughs> gotta schedule this. Hey, where's my, uh, where the hell is my calendar? What? I don't have anything planned today? That's not true. 10 meeting. And then, um, I was gonna do space station stuff. Actually, I actually already have it, so I'll just put uh, paint overs, pictures, and then Overwatch stream. <laughs> this gone. I'm sure there'll be some epic plays. Right. And then I have class at six uh, to think about. I could do work during this time too. I want to stream later. So stream. And then maybe um, creature designs. I've been using uh, I've been using um, Google calendars because it's really helpful. Looks pretty sick, yeah. actually. I haven't seen it before, or haven't used it. Yeah, if you have Google, like if you just click here, you already have it. And then I have it synced to my phone too, so my phone will like go off once it's there. Yeah, this is till. It's like, hey, I get it to work. This is till. Oh, well, it's like all, all day after. It's like till the end of the day. Holy smokes! All right, but it starts at twelve. Twelve. So they have like 15. portfolio reviews and stuff. Yeah. So normally you can see the Google stuff right here, but for whatever reason it's not popping up, which is weird. But anyway. Um, yeah, I, I usually recommend people going to events a lot because events are just the best way to get people to look at your stuff.
until they're like there and they can see you and they meet you and you can talk to them and it's easier for you to get feedback because they're not going to be like it's not like it's not going to be like facebook where they'll see the message like but before they click on it so you don't see it seen by whatever they can just come yeah, yeah. they can just kind of avoid it it's like if you text your friend you know they got it everybody checks their phone everybody knows yeah yeah so you, you know, don't lie that you didn't get the message to say you I always feel a little bit bad for people doing all the reviews at events because they're like doing like 250 <laughs> so that's like... kind of the thing that they're, they're there for I mean if they're in like a again that's some something that I would say too like if you're in a room where they're doing portfolio reviews like don't feel like afraid that you can't ask but like if they're like at a bar and they're clearly having fun with their friends and stuff, like don't don't do it then. And if if, right. if it comes up, then great. But if it doesn't, it's just better just to make a friend. Um, yeah, exactly. And usually organically that will work better because then they'll be like, oh, you know, do you, what do you do, and then et cetera, et cetera. But if that never comes up, you guys just have awesome conversations and never really find out who each other are. That happened once actually. I was hanging out with this guy and we we're just having a blast we we're just hanging out and talking and drinking and then uh, uh the next day um i was talking to a student and i was like this is all at afcc and i was talking to a student i was giving them some portfolio reviews and i was like you know um you should talk with uh you should email or message adrian smith because adrian smith is really good at this stuff and it's the kind of stuff he does and he's like oh i did and i was like oh cool why did you do that he's like uh i did it Today I did it actually like like five minutes ago. I talked to him. I'm like, <laughs> what? what do you mean you talked to him? Like he's here? And he's like, yeah, he's here at IFCC. I, IFCC. And I was like, oh shoot, where is he? I was like, point point to him. And then he pointed to the guy that I was hanging out with the, the, the other day. And I was like, I was <laughs> hanging out great. with Adrian Smith this whole time. I didn't realize. But it was like it was. My point is, is like keeping that consistent, just being awesome to everybody. Don't treat anybody like they're Adrian Smiths, you know treat adrian smith like you treat just a student um mm -hmm. that goes well it's really like that's why i'm uh, probably very popular and well known amongst a lot of artists it's not just because i'm a good artist that, i think that's easy you guys will all become really great artists in time no doubt in my mind right but being a cool person a nice person is something that you know is easy to forget when you start surrounding yourself with like or you want to try to become or make it in the industry, right? And I think for me, I've always had that uh, about me because when I was a kid, I used to move around a lot, so I had to learn how to make friends all the time. Mm -hmm. And so I, I learned, yeah, I learned just fucking be cool to everybody. Like, don't titles. Don't are, be an asshole. Yeah, don't be an <laughs> yeah. asshole. Titles are nothing, man. Like, if a person's a jerk, person's a jerk. It's just that simple. And the cool thing about art is, like, no one's ever going to be you, right? So it's yeah. always hard to compare, like, yeah. top pro. It's just preference or, like, job-related. Nobody is – like, there comes a point where, like, when you're in the beginning, like, there's definitely people that are better than you, right? Like, when I was yeah, starting, right, like, there's right. tons of people that are just better in all kinds of ways. But as you get better yourself, um, that starts to change. You know, you start to realize, oh, you know, now it's about, like, what they have they offer because everyone's different and better in different ways or who's better at that specific job and it's like you said it's that's the kind of the best part of it because then everybody has something different to say about their work you know what i really like i mean i've been loving what james Paik, john park and all those guys have been doing like those like that's why i did the dailies at the discord they've inspired that you know well, oh, nice. if i can try to bring them into my discord that'd be really cool yeah, I've been hanging out in there. It's actually been a really cool experience. A lot yeah, of cool people. I want to try. Oh, that's why. S Yahoo freaking snuck it. Snuck up on me. Why, Yahoo? Get out of here. Nobody it set itself as your yeah. search engine. You jerk. <laughs> you stupid jerk. Still, still hanging on. There it is. See, that's why I was able to get the calendar. Freaking jerk faces. Um. Anyway, let me go to. John Parks, see Lloyd, he's about to go to BlizzCon, that's why he's been doing all that cool stuff. Hope he gets a job. He did a model, and I was like, that looks pretty good. I think he might get it, get some good feedback. I'm not sure if he'll get a job, but definitely good feedback. 
What? Yeah, John Park's always crushing it. Dylan Cole, too, man. He's getting up on these 30-minute sketches. Are you kidding me? Satellites. Just, just doing the satellites. God damn you guys. Yeah, look at that. Let's see if I can do this with Facebook. Yeah, dude. Why is uh, Pure Pure F so awesome? That's great. So, uh, Yoink. Yeah, this is... I'm just going to steal all his paintings. I'm just going to make a John Park... <laughs> John Park satellite folder? Well, what's cool about uh, Pure... If, if you guys haven't used this, um, you'll see in just a second. Um, what's cool about it is that you can just move images around, scale them differently, but you can also, like, have them floating, like, aimlessly. This is pretty cool. He's definitely becoming, like, a just straight-up good concept, like, a uh, concept illustrator. Like, he's, I think he's better than Craig Mullins. Yeah, he's been painting a lot. He, he, he's definitely better. Not only that, he can, he is a better teacher too he's really good at teaching it i wrote like a whole post about him i was like dude he's awesome i want to see if i can get up in this these things with them man yeah to piggyback off what you're saying about just like talking to people and not being a jerk that doing that actually led me to my first job and first internship I was just working as a server and bullshitting with this dude and it was a uh, uh, Justin Fields guy, and he hooked me up. Oh yeah, Justin Gobi Fields. Yep. I wonder if John has this thing up here. Um. Anyway. Hey, look at that on the top page again. Sweet deals. <laughs> Thank you, y'all. Thank you, y'all. This is cool. Huh. Oh, dude, this is that creator artist. I love this guy. He's got new stuff. Oh, shit, he's got new stuff. Oh, damn. Yeah, that's some awesome uh, fantasy creature stuff. This is rad. Okay. Huh. Okay, I'll come back to that, not to get distracted. Um, so, yeah, so you have this this reference folder, right? It's just floating around. What's cool is that I can do um, this, and now there are floating images. And since I have one monitor, this is like really useful. And especially for, uh, especially for, uh, what you call it, ZBrush, because ZBrush doesn't have um, doesn't have yeah, a way. You have to, to have that other screen, pretty much. Yeah, but this. This allows me to kind of have my reference floating even in ZBrush, which is really useful. So now I can go in here and kind of like look at these. I wonder if I can color pick from those. No, that would be too OP. <laughs> <laughs> Can't have it all. But uh, it's all right. It's probably better that I don't color pick so I can just kind of learn the colors. Um, but one thing that I think that I need to start doing too, I was planning on just doing more... Um, uh, I was planning on getting like some uh, old traditional artist books that I have, like Richard Schmidt, and just start reading through them and start learning from these guys again. Like I started learning anatomy again, especially because I'm doing creatures more. And my creatures, like I haven't had to like take it seriously in a long time. Oh, so what was the tool? Oh, it's called uh, Pure Ref. It takes a little bit to get used to. Like once you learn all the hotkeys and stuff, it's like really easy. It's just awesome. You can do cool stuff like this too. You can like rotate it. It's like dope. It was really helpful because when I had, um, and here's what you can do too. Watch, I'll show you. So you can you can right click on this, and then you can save it, right? And then I'll just call this J. John P. Ref board one it's important that i'm naming this because i've never done this before really kind of categorize my referring but this like makes it so it's like you kind of want to do that you know you know what i mean 
Yeah. Because if you if you right click on here, you can see there's like recent ones, and so I can go here. I can go to form Anthony one. And right now it's showing this, but uh, what I'll do is just basically. Uh, oh, what has both of them? Whoa. Hmm. Anyway, so I was studying anatomy, and so I have my arms. So I named this one the arm ones, and it was easy for me to kind of read the brachia radialis because I can just rotate it, which is balls, and that's really cool. I didn't even know I could overlay even my reference boards. That's that's really cool. Select, and yeah. you can minimize it, so if it's like in the way, you can just like minimize it and just bring it back up and you're ready for it again. So one thing that I think these guys do, which uh, Jamie Jones did, he's kind of the pioneer of this kind of just super efficient butt brush work digitally. Him and like people like some of the massive black guys like Whip Brockna, which is like he would just like paint, like he'll just like paint one stroke with like one brush and then I like change the brush, change the color and then paint another stroke. And then it just looks badass. And it just was so efficient. And, um, it seems slow, right? When you're watching someone do it, it seems like I'm going really slow, but he would only have like 10, right? And I think Shadi Safadi and like, um, Eitan Zana, these guys have kind of been like lar larger voices of this, but mm. it all originated from Jamie. And because um, even Jamie taught them to do this stuff, and like they would do a loose line, and then they would kind of draw in that. You know what I mean? It's kind of getting like a nice uh, texture base too. But it's not even just textured; like this is just like real efficient painting, mm. right? And just like trying to make sure every mark is a badass mark. And what I'm, I think I need to do probably in over the weekend or in the coming days is to do the same thing is just come in here and just be really efficient with my my um my brushwork I'm already pretty efficient when it comes to just character design right like I could just use a round brush for the whole thing and can nail it to the wall right but what I'm trying to say is I need to even become more efficient um when it comes to uh what you call it uh the whole seed, like the whole concept. And there's some brushes in here that are really good for like stuff like just, so like when I look at this image right here that John did, like look at this, this flower, like he clearly had like a circle brush that he used. And he used like clearly a brush with it. Like all these are, there's a brush that you can tell he used for. It's kind of like uh, the, the, the biggest pioneer of this is Bob Ross, right? The person that's master of those people. Happy trees, man. Yeah, but if you ever watch him paint, like he uses very few brushes and stuff like that. He just uses them effectively. And so, like, look how quickly you can make the ground look like ground if you get like all the right kind of brushes, right? Like, look how quickly that looks like some sort of ground. Right. But uh, yeah, going back to kind of the 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 first original question no just to make sure we answer that entirely yeah just don't be a dick be obviously cool <laughs> you know <laughs> you, you 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 can if you have really hard social if you have like pretty bad social skills because this happens some people just aren't equipped for whatever reasons you know and i'm not judging you for that if that's something that's true for for any of you guys you know just be clear just just know this like no one wants to be bothered you know, so don't bother them intensively and on constantly, you know, just, uh, you know, within reason, message them what you think you've, you've done. And then if they, or if you feel like you're now starting to become a burden, then you maybe you might be, but if you message a person, like I would say like once a, or twice a month, you know, like that's not a big deal. But if you send someone your portfolio once or twice a month, things too much, because there's, you can't improve. If they said no to you, a month is not going to make you good enough all of a sudden. It just isn't. Right. It's that you will absolutely improve, but it's not going to be, it's going to be too subtle, you know? Um, and so if you really want to like show your portfolio to somebody and you feel like you've improved, you know, then the best way to do that is to do it when you think you generally, you actually have improved. And I think like a good half a year or a year is good. 
you know? So that's my advice to y'all about that. Cool, man. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, just imagine it from their perspective. Like, a, like what do you think they're thinking? In a realistic sense. Um, one of my closest friends, uh, John, he, uh, he has real anxiety issues with this type of stuff. And, you know, when we were running an event, we were doing our first creative juice, and he was stressing out the whole time, right? He was just freaking out every second. And I was like, well, what's the worst that could happen? And he's like, oh, people are going to freaking out, like, freak out and, like, cuss at us and think that we're a fraud. And I'm like, why, <laughs> why would anyone do that? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, you're right. He's like, would you do that? He's like, no, of course not. So yeah, you gotta give people the benefit of the doubt. Like people aren't going to be up in arms if we're making mistakes that are not that are out of our control. You know, we're we're doing our best to make it a good event, but we don't have to have it be the best event. Yeah. And uh, he he started to learn that that's the case with a lot of this type of stuff. So he stopped being so uh, so distracted by his like I I, I tell people. You're, in your mind, you're more dangerous, right? Because you're thinking of all the problems that could happen. And, yeah, they could happen, but it's like, come on. like it's, People are <laughs> generally rooting for you. This is the same right. advice I give people whenever they do public speaking. I say, like, you know, when you're doing a public uh, speaking, you know, think about it when, for, from the perspective of, of being an audience member. Have you ever wanted somebody to really screw up, screw the pooch? So no, right? You're usually a, a, like rooting if for. That's them. the case. You're not there. <laughs> yeah, um, and usually, if you are laughing at somebody's failures, it's usually from a disconnected point of view, like you're on your phone or something, right? Right. Where it's kind of like, oh, that's <laughs> personal. Yeah, but if you're there or you paid to be there and you're like there to be like on purpose, um, yeah, you're rooting for people to do well, and uh, yeah. I think he, when I told him that, I think he started to help him understand. I was like, yeah, people generally are rooting for you to do well. They don't want you to fail because it's, it feels awkward for, not only for you, but it's for, mostly for them, you know, watching someone doing really terrible. Yeah. And he was just like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, just be cool. Like, everybody in here has been pretty cool. Like, uh, I could tell, like, for, you know, uh, Josh is in the class, right? And uh, Josh is a really good, cool guy. He's really nice. But I, I could tell, like, he gets nervous sometimes. And we, we had to talk about it in one of the discords. Like, he just kept on talking. <laughs> and, like, there was be silence for just like, a second. And he was like, all right, well, let me talk, 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 talk. Right, right. And I'm like, hey, Josh, like, we're all friends here. You don't have to, like, talk every second, you know? Like, it's right. no big deal. And he's like, ah, oh, okay, thanks. And I could tell, like, a little bit of relief. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah. I get it, man. I get like, you know, you, you it feels weird to be silent. Like, you know, John was the same way. John has like, like he's trying, but yeah. It's like, no, dude. Like, you know, we're all here to try to become great artists. There's nothing you have to say or do to prove it otherwise. You know, we're we're buddies. You know, feel free to kind of just talk when you feel like you want to talk when, or ask questions. You know, but you don't have to fill the the time with just talking because it's just, you know, it's clearly it's just. I can tell it's you're just nervous. Filled. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's okay to just sit in silence. I remember one time me and uh, John were in a car once, and uh, we were talking. This is, like, in very early stages when we were hanging out a lot more because he was working with me. And uh, he was just constantly just, like, like, I'll just, like, we would talk and we'll have, like, this really good conversation. And then, like, we'll be, but we have, like, an hour-long drive somewhere. And then, like, after the conversation, it will just be quiet. And I was like, I'll just be quiet. I'll just sit there in silence. And then John will just be like, and they start making noises. And I'm like, why are you doing that? He's like, this is awkward. It's so quiet. I was like, it's only awkward because you're making it awkward. You just got to slide in that Nickelback album. Yeah, I was like, it's just two friends sitting in a car driving somewhere. We're just, there's no reason for us to be talking anymore. We're done talking. Doesn't mean you hate each other all of a sudden. Yeah, like, it's fine, bro. Because I love you, man. You know, and he was just like, yeah, you're right. And we just stay silent for like a good 10, 15 minutes until something relevant. But it was fine. Like, I think I even just took a nap. I was just tired. Um, and I, I, I learned that from one of my friends, too. She was like that. And um, 
she was really good about just if she doesn't want to talk she'll just never talk <laughs> and uh <laughs> it was weird at first and then i learned that why is it weird it's like because we're social animals it's like, okay well i'm the one that's making it weird then not her right so yeah again just going back to kind of the point i was making earlier you know reasonable be reasonable reasonable people doing reasonable things and this is kind of my approach to most things you know people might ask how I, my my political point of view on things and i'm like i i think in reason so what's reasonable yeah you know? um i don't pick a side like for instance i'm a vegan right mm -hmm. but only in the sense of that's what i eat which is no meat at, at any kind really but it's it's uh I don't like the political association that goes with the word vegan because there's like this whole kind of culture of there's like sure, a sure. there's a type of person you are if you're a vegan, which is like super extreme hippie person. Like that's a stereotype <laughs> right. of it. But the obvious but obviously that's not true for everyone, right? And so for me sure. it's um for me it's that I feel the same way. Like I don't want to push agenda. Uh if people want to ask me questions, I'll definitely definitely answer them. But um, yeah, no agenda. I don't like to try to push. In the beginning, I think it's like that, but that's a common symptom of people that learn a lot about things that piss them off. They want everyone else to know. But I learned that's stupid. Like I don't want to. I wouldn't want anyone else doing that to me. Uh, yeah, again, exactly. Going back to within reason type of personality, and so I just kind of took a backseat. And now I've like even taken the Dalai Lama diet, which is basically I will eat whatever. Like when I travel. Only if is clearly like someone's like insisting that I try it. Like when I was in Italy, right. and they were like, "Hey, you should try this thing," and I was like, "No, nah, vegan, I can't." I kept on feeling pretentious. They were really mm. cool. They they weren't like, "Oh, what this fucking jerk off?" Like they were like, "Oh, dude, I'm so sorry." They, they were like really, you know, empathetic. Accommodating, yeah. But I realized like why, like why it's only like this one meal. It's not like. <laughs> it's not it it's not forever, like yeah, yeah it's not like it's just not a big deal it's, and i'm in a different country these people are being really nice they're not maliciously trying to to, to do this to me you know it's just a, yeah yeah like again within reason like it's fine you know so, so yeah i'll try it i just like try a bite or two and i was like oh yeah it tastes good it tastes like it tastes like uh food that's good <laughs> thank you very much and so yeah i, I think like back to what I was trying to say, like, you know, within reason, just be constantly considering what others, people's or thoughts are, be empathetic and do that always. So you guys will meet people that are great, great people, like your classmates, you know, and they're maybe they're not good today. You know, maybe they're just OK artists today, but they're just awesome people you love to hang out with, you know, and that's more important than being buddies with like an art director. You know what I mean? Because uh, if an art director is a jerk off, you know, and you're just friendly friendly to that person because they're, you know, an art director. Um, yeah, how sincere is that? Yeah, it's, you know? you're setting yourself up for disaster too, because you you might actually get a job one day with that person and hate it. <laughs> yeah. And um, that happens a lot, and I have a lot of my friends that have left super big companies because they just don't like working with the art directors and stuff like that and the, the management and it happens more than you would suspect and uh that's i have I noticed kind of a a theme with some people that they're like only motivated to become friends with uh someone who could do something for their career versus just being cool to everyone yeah and i think uh, for me i'm okay with i get that you know there's there's mm. a level of insecurity that people have with that uh they just stay acquaintances, acquaintances instead of long, long, long lasting friends. Make sense? Right. Like I know people like that, that I'm still friends with that. I know they're very opportunist, but they're not mean and they're not doing it in a, like there's, there's people that are opportunists that are just jerk offs that I just completely disconnect yeah, yeah. myself from those people. But there's people that are just like clearly there for like an agenda, but they're not, they're, they're just trying to make it living. You know, they're just trying to do it and they don't know any other way right now, you know? Yeah, and I'm okay with that. It's fine, you know. Like if as long as you don't really hurt anybody with it, 
it's, it's yeah you're not stepping on people to get ahead kind of thing yeah, yeah. yeah. like if you're really like you're like only hanging out with people because you know you feel like they have something to offer that that's fine i get it you know i it's not like i never did that either like there's times where when i first started same, same mentality but i always drove with the, the the idea of being myself first you know above all right um, right and as i became more established i started realizing how kind of silly that is and that's why i make sure that anyone who learns from me keeps those same kind of ethics right like it's okay to to kind of have an agenda but at the same cost like don't ever lose what you really want to do <laughs> because because yeah. you might you might accidentally get those jobs and you might hate it yeah just be unhappy later on anyway <laughs> so i think you get that which is cool yeah, I would say um, I would encourage you guys to to just be mostly. That's what I was saying with the, the Daniela, right? I was telling her, you know, it's cool to just like you know do the render and stuff, but always lead with your with your heart and your ambition and dreams, right? Lead with that. Lead with what you really want to do. Don't lead with anything else because you might end up working there. <laughs> you might end up like it's the problem that that one guy that I couldn't hire. Like he just keeps he keeps working for other people, and he was showing me all his personal stuff, and it was really cool, and it was really inspiring. But it was never finished; it was all half half done. You know what I mean? And mm. it's I was telling him, I was like, it's like, yeah, you're telling me that you can do it, but like, there's no evidence of it. It's like you know, don't lie to yourself just to try to get this job because you might not do well. I'd rather you get this job because you fucking are excited about it. You can't wait to get started. Yeah, that's yeah, your I mean, thing. And uh, I think he understood that. I said, and by the way, I told him, I was like, this this is a relationship that is an ongoing relationship, meaning that he can always message me at any time, you know, when he's ready. Like, I'm, I understand, I'm not stupid. I get people get better, you know? Like, right. I don't blacklist people because you're so bad at art. Like, and he wasn't bad <laughs> either, that's the thing. But I, I understand, like, I, I need to be, if I'm going to take this job seriously and I want to do a good job, I need to make sure that I bring upon people that will help the studio so that my boss trusts me as a director, art director. Yeah, it's got to be a guarantee, you know? Mm -hmm. So he'd be like, damn, we hired this guy, and now it's like we're killing it. It's like, AJ's a really good art director. All right, that's what I want to be. <clears throat> and so, yeah, keep that in mind, guys. Keep that in mind. Be good people. Be friendly to one another. Hang out with people that are generally great. Uh, the people that I take on these workshops with me, too, are just close friends. I mean, I know lots of great artists, but I only want to bring my closest friends. You know? Yeah, it's just more fun to be around, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Like Kalen. Um, Kalen's a great example. Kalen's a really good artist, but I know people that are clearly better than him. Right? I know, like, some really heavy hitter concept artists that are environment artists, right? But Kalen teaches very like, much like me, and he's a very sweet person. He's a really kind man, you know? And he's been with me since the beginning, since we first started this whole adventure together as trying to be concept artists, you know? I, I can't imagine bringing anyone else, right? Yeah, that's great, man. So, like, I know people that are, like, heavy hitters, leaders in the industry, and I don't really, I can care less. Uh, about bringing them um, over Kalen. Even like uh, I was thinking about bringing Jama to this next event because I think Jama is another one of those amazing people to have in my life. And he's like, oh, you're bringing Jama. So why are you even bringing me then? And I was like, what? I'm talking about Kalen. <laughs> I was like, you <laughs> have like to that. go. Yeah, you have to go because you're freaking Kalen. You're, you're my best friend. And you have a great message. People love your talk. I was like, you, out of all the talks that we have, uh, yours this is my favorite because it's really good. He's just like, you're just saying that. I was like, <laughs> nah, dude, it's real life. Real talk. Yeah, real talk. Friendships. Something that they they do really well that I'm not getting that I've been struggling with this last this like last five minutes. It's just they really do a good job with scale. I think it's because I need better brushes for scale. I think this brush I just think. Does a good job of it actually. Nice. 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 Anyway, any other questions? 
Actually, hold on just a second. I think I have a meeting in like two minutes, or right now actually. Give me one second. I'm going to message my boss, see if we're still on. He might be, he's not even in. Maybe he's messaging me. Oh, he just messaged me. Yeah, he said it's going to be moved to 1030. Call got pushed to 1030. Okay. 1030 then. Just ping me or call me. And then just to make sure I don't lose track of time, I'm going to put my timer on. Okay. Minimize that. Minimize this top secret thing. There you go. <laughs> Any other questions? Great question. That was a good question. Had a really good answer. Yeah, man. Good talk. Real talk. Yeah. Another problem I think I might have had with this is that I didn't draw any scale, image, anything in here for scale, like the actual image. I don't think I put any scale. Like, if you look right here, he has, like, cool fences and stuff like that. Uh, I think they're using photo reference. I don't think they're just drawing this from memory. Not to take away from it. It's just that it helps if you have an image. Sure, yeah. To draw from, so I don't think it's entirely... But I, yeah, you just kind of jump wrong. right in there. I think this first one is definitely from an image. This 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 one on the top right could have been from him. I don't. I can't. I could see that being his own drawing. Because there's a quality to it that's not as good as this bottom one. I mean, it's not bad, but it's like there's just some things that I don't think I would have even thought about. Like it's just so good. You know. Yeah, this top left on. one. This top left one is absolutely from reference. Um, yeah, I'm curious. I like those ballerinas a lot. Yeah, it's very um, sergeant. That's why I like it too. Mm -hmm. My little guy is also kind of awful, but I'm not worried about him because I can paint characters like a boss. So I'm not <laughs> too worried about that guy. <laughs> I just need to be better at impressionistically painting that kind of character um, with just very simple brushstrokes. Yeah, I love this pure ref stuff. Yeah, this brush is great. It's kind of like chalky. Anywho, which brush is this? 175. Is there anyone else that has any other questions? I see Rochelle wrote something. Does anyone... Oh, so what was the tool that you were using for... Oh, that was an old question. Does anyone know what happened to Jace Wallace? He does dope art, but seems to disappear from the internet. He's probably one of those people that... Like, very much like Craig Mullins, who just doesn't show up until, like, like once every decade... <laughs> like once every few years like he'll just stay completely silent and then just come back and then just drop like hundreds of artwork that he did in the last two years or something like that there's a lot of people like that you gotta understand that I am a rare breed like I think out of all the concept artists in the industry I probably post the most I, I can't think of anyone else that posts more than me I, I really can't there might be but I don't know who they are like, can you guys think of someone that posts, like, pretty much, like, every day, if, if not every other day? I, I took a break, I think, like, last year, maybe, when I was doing all the roll-up pencil stuff, maybe, like, a year or two ago. And people recognized that. They, they hey, what the? I feel like the internet's empty now. Like, nobody posts anything anymore. It's not that nobody posts anymore. It was just I stopped posting. <laughs> and then, like, and then just the gap was, like, Zeronis? Paul Kwan? Maybe he does, uh, and I should be more specific. I mean, on Facebook. So maybe, maybe you're right. Like people like because they have Patreons, right? So it's kind of like their job, too. I mean, let's just find out. Yeah, I mean, let's check out this. Um, Got to get in the habit of minimizing that so that I don't get. 
Like, how long ago was this one? 11 days ago? That's not too bad. And then the one before that, 25 days ago, so pretty much every two weeks, at least on his art station. I'm pretty slow on my art station, too. I'm trying to get it every other day, if not every day. It's hard. So 20 hours ago, eight days ago. So I'm, like, on the same path. See, I was doing pretty good. Like, I'm either a week or two days. I'll try to post today. I'm trying to post, like, at least every other day on my art station. I need to get better about that. Uh, maybe I should put that on my schedule. And I need to get back to DeviantArt. And I think my strategy with DeviantArt is just, like, just do, like, one major dump of artwork a month. That could be fun. So I'll be, like, Craig Mullins on, on DeviantArt. <laughs> but on Facebook, it's, like, every day. Like, every other day, I'm, like, posting something. You know? You feel like that helps you stay consistent? Well, there's two things that it does. Or maybe three. One of the things that it does is it creates more following. Because my strategy mm -hmm. is pure volume, which is like, not the, the song sound app, but the, the actual <laughs> real words of what I just said. Like just constant volume um, increases your followers and views. Because you're just always mm -hmm. there. And the more you're there, the more people are going to see it and have an opportunity to see it. Whether it's good or not, I I happen to be good, so it's it helps, right? Yeah, it doesn't hurt. Yeah, it doesn't hurt. If you're really bad and you're posting every day, it's kind of then it's only serving the other two points. So the the so the first point is like exposure, just constant exposure, which is great. The second point is that it it forces you, yeah, like to kind of be accountable, to kind of keep working, making good work. Uh, which, like I said, if if worst case scenario for someone who posts often is that they just get better. They just get better and better and better because they're posting often. They're drawing often. It's, it's easy to think that you're working every day, but it's another thing to put that artwork out there and try to say it's good. Right, yeah. Right? So that's the second thing that it does. So me posting every day is not only giving me exposure, it's also making me accountable and making me uh, get, get better, right? And the third thing that it does is it it adds... It adds challenge. It, it gives you a it gives you an ability to create a good habit. Yeah. And that habit is probably like the most. Deadlines, you know. The habit is probably the most important out of all the three things I said. Because exposure is great because it helps you get a job and gets you like for in my case it helps me sell my classes, and helps me sell my tutorials, right? Mm. Um, and then uh, becoming better at it is also great because you want to get good at what you want to do, right? But being able to create good habits is the best reason why. Teaching yourself how to create and learn how to sustain habits is the most important reason why you should do it. Because then if you want to become better at 3D, then all you have to do is say, well, I'm just going to do a little bit of 3D every day. Okay? Whether I post it on my Facebook or whatnot. So that's why I like what I'm doing with the Discord because I made the daily painting and daily sculpting. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I, I even wrote in the, the pins, like if you read the pins, like it's not about critiquing either. It's just about just doing it, like keeping the critiques yeah, getting it out there. And so people could put like, you know, like some of the sculpts aren't the best, but it doesn't matter. It's not about being the best. It's just about posting, right? So like even my sculpt, I don't think is really that great compared to what I'm comparing it to. But mm. the fact that I'm doing it is forcing me to get better and better. And then yeah, just rock that ugly. Yeah. Keep it up y'all inspiring I can't wait for the day where we uh, all will only see epic stuff coming out of this channel and the other one Oh, by the way, there's a cool thing that you can do. You can add reactions to this stuff, which I just oh, cool. So you can put it, bing. And uh, they they suggested, too, that you can do a voting system. So if you guys have, like, three or four characters you want people to choose from, you can just say heart for this character, smiley face for this one. Probably do more abstract ones so it's not, like, like heart means the better one. You know, maybe, like, uh, I'd say maybe vote with these first frequently used ones since they're there. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Like the this 
fork. Eggplant poop. fork and poop. poop. Yeah, but it's like it's not saying that it's good or not. You're just having people vote for stuff. I'll I'll do it later so people can see that it could be done. Um, but yeah, I like rock that ugly. I like that because you know the whole reason why people don't post and put their work out there is because they're afraid of getting it destroyed. That's why I had my blog a long time ago, and my blog was just like, oh, it's just a blog, you know, people get it. Um, I encourage people to just post a lot, because that's really, that's all it takes to become great at anything. It's just consistency. Yeah, I kind of come to the realization where, like, the real learning that you end up needing to do isn't always enjoyable at the time. It's pretty, pretty harsh. Yeah. So it's just get it out, you know? That's why I tell people to put their money into patience and resilience, not motivation and inspiration. Right. Yeah, that's a good point. Because not every day is going to be motivating or inspiring. Yeah. In fact, more more likely, it's never going to be that consistent. Yeah, you just keep reaching for something else, uh, you know, forever. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, homies? Let me go check on my boss while you guys were thinking about that. See what he said. Oh, he just messaged me right now. He said, ready? Can in five. Okay. So good. Took that extra time to do a demo for class. Wrap up now. All right, so uh, any last questions before I let you guys go? This is a lot of fun. I should do this more often. I'm gonna start, maybe I'm going to do this for my painting stuff. I'm going to do those these types of studies that they've been doing. They've been doing them in 30 minutes, which is really impressive. So I'm going to try to do it in 30 minutes. It's going to be garbage. But, you know, got to gotta just put out that junk. Yeah, rock that ugly. Rock that ugly. <laughs> Anyone else? Any concerns with their lives, their choices? I think you guys are pretty level-headed peoples. Hope you guys enjoyed the demo. If you guys have not got this this software yet, um, I highly encourage it. The Pure Ref, because it's so good. Yeah, it seems handy. It's so handy. All right. Yeah, this is this is pretty nice. You know what I like about what he does with some of the stuff he like blurs the edges deliberately. I'm curious to how he does that. I wonder if he uses a smudge brush. A lot. I know a lot of these guys use smudge brush like constantly. So maybe I need to start using it more. Yeah, definitely on some of those flowers or like mixer brush. That's what I meant to say. Yeah, mixer brush. That's what I meant. I use smudge all the time. I feel like this guy's misplaced too. He should be lower. I'll fix that later. All right. Peace out, guys. Hope you guys have a good Thanks one. Thanks again, man. Yeah, have a great weekend. Guys, I'll see you guys in the Overwatch stream. <laughs> Watch it Overwatch. Yeah. I really want to see that. Later, y'all. Peace. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. Please subscribe to watch more in the future. If you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you like this content, you can go to my website, robotpencil.net, where you can find mentorships, tutorials, and a Patreon to get more exclusive content. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in my next videos.